Are you ready to alter your life? Because that's what's about to happen. If you're looking for a judgment-free zone where TMI doesn't exist, to have the conversations you're not supposed to have, and explore how to make small yet substantial, sustainable changes in your life to actually care for and empower yourself through physical and emotional fitness, then you're in the right place. I'm your host, Alyssa Alter, M-O-M-D-O-N, the Amy Poehler of vaginas, author, speaker, coach, former Broadway performer, certified Pilates instructor, pelvic health expert, comedian, co-founder of postpartum.com, mom on the mend, and board certified doctor of nothing. I believe that if we put as much time, energy, and discipline on our insides as we do our outsides, we'll be unstoppable. So, are you on the edge of your seat? Sweating a little bit, ready to know how boundaries, eyelashes, and pubic hair are related, how they're all basically the same, and how they are more than just a buzzword, status symbol, or sort of lumped into self-care in a haphazard way? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then you are going to love what I have in store for you today. You are also going to get an inside look into how my brain works, which to me, is often very entertaining and sometimes feels absolutely insane that I suddenly link the purpose of pubic hair to the purpose of boundaries in our lives and then immediately start questioning eyelashes. And luckily, I happen to be friends with some really freaking brilliant people who help me make sense of, legitimize, and deepen my knowledge of how these things do in fact connect and relate to each other. Okay, before we dive in any deeper, a reminder that my newest one woman show is happening in three weeks. We party hashtag this is motherhood is a one night only evening of song, maybe some dance. Okay, definitely some dance about what happens after the happily ever after of marriage and motherhood. So back in 2017, I wrote, produced, and performed my first one-woman show, Me Party, hashtag I love my life, about divorce, dating, and making my own party. Writing this show helped me process, make sense of, make lemonade out of my divorce, and create the path to my happily ever after. Clips from the show are available on my YouTube channel, and I invite you to watch them. Now, When I gave birth to Everett in 2019, I had this plan that I was going to do a motherhood show before his first birthday. And well, COVID happened and my postpartum anxiety happened and my PTSD happened, which all put a wrench in things. And now I am in my second trimester with my second baby and I got to tell this story before the next chapter begins. I am so excited about this show and... I, it is about all of the parts of motherhood that happen after the happily ever after, like I said, right? The parts that Disney doesn't talk about, the reality of motherhood. Yes, I love my kid and this whole thing is a fucked up mess, truly. So I'm going to sing about it and I promise the show will make you laugh and it may make you cry and you absolutely will not enjoy every moment, even though people will tell you otherwise. And if you are looking for some behind the scenes clips and musings, check out my Substack because I'm writing about it all over there. So again, I did my first one woman show in 2017 about my divorce, dating for the first time in my 30s because I met my ex-husband when I was 18. So I'd never been on like a real date and finding myself along the way. And I found that the writing process of that show was an integral part of my healing and my ability to make sense of what happened, my part in what happened, and how I can use that those very real life lessons to alter my life. (laughs) I know, I can't help it, but truly, how I use what I learned to build the life that I've always dreamed of. Not what someone else wanted for me or dreamt for me, but the life that I wanted, the life that included me and what I want and what I dream of. And those lessons that I learned and the reality of what it looks like to actually take those lessons, work them out and put them into practice. I don't know, my mic keeps tipping back. (laughs) Did you hear that? Anyway, um, 
and then actually following through on my intentions from said lessons served me so well as I prepared to get married again because having a second wedding definitely a mind fuck for me and becoming a mother because in motherhood, right? I don't matter anymore. I'm the vessel who is then discarded after the baby arrives. Culturally, I'm I basically cease to exist. I'm not supposed to have needs, let alone speak of them or meet them. But I'd done that before. I'd done that life of self-abandonment in favor of what other people wanted and what other people dreamed of and what other people expected of me. And I made a promise to myself and refused to suffer in silence ever again, which is why I only suffer out loud now, which I talk about in a recent episode of this podcast, episode number 35, Silence, Fat Phobia, and Suffering Out Loud, Thoughts from the First Trimester. So anyway... I am now pregnant with my second baby. I'm writing this new show and holy smokes, is it a wild adventure organizing my thoughts and experiences, finding links and patterns where I didn't know they existed and finding the humor and humanity in all of it. I invite you to check out the link for link in the show notes to learn more about the show, the show and secure your ticket. Now, if you're in the tri-state area and you can see the show and we could meet in real life, I would Love that. The show is happening at Green Room 42 in New York City's famed theater district. And if you're not in a reasonably commutable distance, there are virtual tickets available. So basically what I'm saying is there's no reason for you not to see the show. And again, you will laugh. You might cry. And while you certainly will not enjoy every moment, it'll all be worth it in the end. Okay, so today's topic, eyelashes, pubic hair, and boundaries. This is the culmination of thoughts that have been swirling in my brain for a while and finally came together. Sort of like when you add chia seeds to water, forget about them for a little, and then you come back and they've formed a gel that can magically work as an egg replacement in baking to bind ingredients together. So how did this idea, this chia to gel (laughs) formation um, idea begin? I am glad that you asked. A young woman in my life who is on the precipice of puberty, she and I were discussing shaving our legs. And I promise you that this whole conversation was appropriate. It was um, no boundaries were crossed. Um, just, I don't know. I feel like I should say that I was not overstepping or being inappropriate there in either direction. It was all good. Okay. And it was really interesting because I have conversations like this with adults all the time. And I don't know, it felt really cool to be able to be this trusted resource that is completely judgment-free, where TMI is not a thing, where I can support the next generation because they're are going to be places where like this young woman or any of these young kids are, they're going to get all of the information, but it might not be informed information, educated information, and they're going to be inundated with it and not know how to approach it. And I don't know, it felt really important to be trusted to have this conversation. So anyway, we're talking about shaving our legs. And then this young woman that I was speaking to brought up under her arms. And I shared about how I actually got hair there earlier than some of my friends and it made me really self-conscious. So I started shaving it. Naturally, pubic hair was next. So now I myself remember being one of the first of my friends to get pubic hair, whether I was actually the first to get it or I'm just like so blonde and fair skinned that like it was, I was one of the first people that we could notice it on. I don't know, but I do know that I didn't like the look or feel of it. And I didn't like how my camp friends noticed and commented <laughs> when we were getting changed for swim. Now, as an adult who has shaved, waxed, left it alone. I have grown to appreciate its presence, appearance, and function. So when this topic came up and my young friend mentioned wanting to change it off, shave it all off because she just wanted it to go away, I met her with so much empathy because I get it. And also, this is such a huge, tangible sign that 
she is transitioning into womanhood and out of childhood. And it's that second part that I think doesn't get quite enough recognition, right? We get so excited and so wrapped up in, you know, oh my God, we're becoming a woman. This is so exciting, right? We get so excited to get our periods. We're going to tell everyone we're going to throw a party. We're going to have a bat mitzvah. But what about what we're losing? What is being left behind, right? And I think it's really okay to give ourselves and our young friends permission to to be a little reticent to grow up, right? I don't know that I had that. I mean, I also was just so excited to have boobs, but I don't know if I had any connection at all or or I maybe I must have, but did I, I don't know. I don't know. Did I feel like I was allowed to? Um, I don't know, but I, I think that there's room for us to give some space for the recognition of what is also being lost as we're gaining other things, right? Okay. Anyway, listen, I said to her, we're talking about pubic hair. She wants to shave it all off. I get it. So I say, listen, people shave their pubic hair all the time. That people shave the part that shows like outside of the line of your underwear and they shave other parts of it too. Listen, she holds the razor. She ultimately gets to make that decision. And therefore, I want her to have information to make her decision for her body and what she is doing with as much knowledge as possible, rather than solely being influenced by the variety of, I'm sure, conflicting, confusing, God knows what, from the kids at school, right? So I ask her, do you know why we have pubic hair? Yeah. Why? She pauses. She like kind of smiles at me. She was like, I don't know. And I was like, great. I was like, why would you, right? Oh, it's fine. Do you want to know why you have pubic hair? She nods. And he said, like, great. So now I'm like, oh, good job, Alyssa. What are you going to say next? And thinking quick on my feet, is that improviser in me that, uh, you know, most of my musical theater career, I worked as a swing. So you understudy everybody. You have to be quick on your feet. Thank goodness. I say, well, you know, how we have eyelashes. She's like, yeah. I was like, do you know why we have eyelashes? And she said, yeah, to keep stuff out of our eyes. I said, exactly. We have pubic hair to keep stuff out of our vaginas because like our eyeballs, vaginas are sensitive. So the hair helps keep germs and stuff out of there so everything stays healthy. Healthy. And just like when something gets into your eyeball and it can hurt or scratch or cause an infection, the same thing can happen in our vaginas and that's why we have pubic hair. Now, Good job, Liz. This makes sense. This made sense to her. It makes sense to me. I told her again, people do all sorts of things with their pubic hair and she's probably going to start hearing some stuff from her friends. And I just wanted her to know why we have it before she makes a decision with what she wants to do with it. So obviously I was very proud of myself for this, making these connections on the fly mm, and also for seemingly, right? Like accurately explaining to a young adult something that can feel so freaking huge in a way that she understood simply, reasonably. It made sense to her because she understands eyelashes. Pubic hair is new. Eyelashes, old news. And obviously I kept replaying this conversation over and over in my mind because this all makes perfect sense to me. But does this actually make sense? How much sense does it make? And is this limited to only to hair on parts of our body? Thankfully, I was able to ask my very brilliant and knowledgeable friends, Dr. Allison Polland, MD, urogynecologist, and Dr. Nora Siegel, MD, PhD, oculoplastics. Now, you may remember Dr. Allison Polland from a previous episode of this show, episode 21, Incontinence is Common, Not Normal, Here's What You Need to Know. And you may remember that I met Allison on the playground in Brooklyn. It turns out we lived in the same building. And I made an appointment with her to see her, uh, like, right when I found out that I was pregnant this time because I wanted to see a professional, a urogynecologist specifically, to check my undercarriage because after my fourth degree tear, I have healed well. I continue to do Pilates for my privates. I wanted another professional opinion. 
confirming for me that I am in good shape to have a healthy continent second pregnancy. So I'm saying this to let you know that I adore her and I trust her. So I emailed her about this episode and I asked for some of her just professional perspective, insight, knowledge regarding pubic hair, why we have it, issues with not having it or removing it. And she shared some thoughts that I found really, really interesting. Now, she did say, she was like, I feel like I should look into this a little bit more. Um, There's always more to know. But what she sees in practice is a lot of problems related to the grooming of pubic hair. And that in fact, she sees it more often in men than women. Patients can get serious abscesses that can even turn into skin-eating infections from from poorly, haphazardly, um, dangerously grooming their pubic hair. And this creates a higher risk in patients with diabetes. It's also very important to remember, I love that she says this, I just love it, that pubic hair norms are different in different cultures and different age groups. She sees patients who are embarrassed to have a pelvic exam because they didn't have a chance to shave. I'm, I would be lying if I said this thought doesn't go through my mind, like before a pelvic exam, right? Like, do, do I consider that? Yeah, duh. And she reminds her patients that everyone is different and she sees all kinds of patients. What strikes me from this response from her, right? This like initial response of what she sees in practice, right? Is that... Grooming and removal of pubic hair is common and something that we tend to handle so haphazardly, yet it is something that clearly creates a a risk to our health and safety, which duh, of course it does. We're using sharp objects, scissors, tweezers, razors, hot wax on our genitals. I love that it's not gender specific because I think it can really feel that way. And my favorite, there is no normal. She says that the the cultural norms different from differ from different cultures, different age groups. There is no normal. There might be trends, but trends are not a measure of normal and abnormal. I also learned that, and this, I mean, I probably learned this for the first time in health class, right? But <laughs> who remembers that? I do. That pubic hair helps to reduce friction during sexual intercourse. It keeps bacteria out of the genitals, prevents the transmission of bacteria, and protects the delicate skin around the genitals. All of this checks out. All of this makes sense. Thank you, Dr. Polland. Okay, so I really needed to fill out these thoughts and theories and ideas that I was having to make sure that I'm guiding the next generation of female anatomy owners considerately. So of course, I had to reach out to my dear friend, Dr. Nora Siegel, MD, PhD. Now I met Nora in college, shout out Skidmore College, go thoroughbreds. And then we reunited the first time after college at Physique 57, and realized we lived in the same apartment building in Greenwich Village, and we reunited once again after both becoming mothers, and I started coaching her postpartum. So Nora is a genius when it comes to everything, and especially oculoplastics. She's like literally an eyelid surgeon. She knows all things eyelids, which includes eyelashes. So I emailed her. I said, this might be the weirdest email you've ever gotten. Can you help me out? I'm working on this podcast episode. And I'm, you know, I gave her the, the like rundown and I said, can you share with me a little bit about the purpose of having eyelashes and problems that we might encounter from having too many, too few, or faulty eyelashes? Dr. Nora Siegel, MD, PhD, replied that eyelashes are meant to protect our eyes. They act as sensors, this, I had never thought of them like this, sensors when objects get close to the eye and cause us to blink, much like a cat's whiskers. Okay, they also prevent dust and debris from getting into the eye and causing abrasions or infections. You could even say that they act like 
air filters for the eyes. Love it. Now, there are many ocular conditions caused by unhealthy or abnormal eyelashes. The most common is blepharitis, which is an inflammatory condition that causes redness, flaking, and irritation along the lash line. Now, blepharitis can also contribute to dry eye and result in styes or I think it's pronounced chalasia. I She gave me like pronunciation keys, but I'm probably still doing a poor job. I, unlike Allison and Nora, I am a doctor of nothing. Okay. So abnormal growth patterns of the eyelashes can, such as trichiasis, which is when the eyelashes, eyelashes grow towards the eyes, and dystochiasis, when the eyelids contain an extra row of eyelashes, can damage the eye permanently. Good eyelid and eyelash hygiene is extremely important. Things like removing makeup at the end of the day. She suggests using a non-oil-based remover such as mis- mis- micellar water, a non-oil-based remover. And she says that it's best not to use lash growth serums or use lash extensions. Now, what strikes me about what Nora has shared Eyelashes are a first line of defense from harm. They help support a healthy environment for our sensitive eyeballs. When not working for us, they easily work against us. Hygiene and maintenance are super important. So pubic hair and eyelashes are filters. They provide a physical boundary to keep harm out and protect a delicate part of ourselves from danger. They allow these delicate parts of us to thrive and stay healthy. They aren't antibacteria terrorists, they're boundaries, allowing in what is helpful or even neutral and tempering and reducing harm. Yet, when I create a boundary with a person in my life, I'm a monster, right? I should be more understanding. They mean well, their blood, that's just how they are. Don't be so sensitive. I call bullshit. I think that the healthiest thing I can do for myself is to create a whole body, a whole life, pubic hair or eyelashes, right? I deserve a filter. It does not have to be a fortress. I am allowed to reduce harm for myself. And it is important that I maintain this boundary, this pubic hair, these eyelashes, because so that they can work for me and not against me. There is a balance, right? Too many eyelashes, right? That extra row can cause problems. Not having any can cause problems, right? Okay, so here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. I bet you that if we could like get the bacteria that's trying to get into my eyeball and my vagina, if we could get them a microphone and have them on this podcast and we ask them, how do you feel that that Alyssa's eyelashes and pubic hair are keeping you out and you are not able to get in there, reproduce and create disgusting discharging infections? How do you feel about that bacteria? I bet that bacteria will have a lot of profanity to say to me and be pretty pissed off that they can't get in, right? That's fine right? Just like it's okay. I'm still not going to let them because that is harmful to me. And I bet if we brought on the show, maybe someone in my life who I won't let into the inner circle to that softer, more vulnerable, vulnerable part of my life, because it's going to hurt me. I bet they would have some strong words about it too. And that's okay. I'm still not going to let them in because that hurts me. That puts me in danger. And I love, I love, love, love how both Dr. Polland and Dr. Siegel talked about how, talked about the maintenance of these boundaries and how when the maintenance of this hair, right, goes off the rails, it creates a slew of other painful, harmful, just uh, like unhelpful (laughs) issues that then need to be further addressed, right? It creates almost a bigger problem. When we don't maintain our emotional, energetic, mental, psychological, physical boundaries, or we do so haphazardly with maybe sharp sharp objects or hot wax, 
we would be lucky if all we get is an ingrown hair or a sty, right? Those are basically pimples. So they're painful, they're red and swollen, yet they're still somewhat satisfying when you pop them. And either way, I'd be happy to never have either one again. But sometimes, sometimes those small infections grow into an abscess and become a deep infection. And what started as trying to do something cool and trendy like eyelash extenses, extensions or serums or vajazzling your landing strip or being the ultimate people pleaser, those things can turn septic and leave permanent damage. Now, if you create such harsh boundaries, if you create like an impermeable fortress around you that no one can get in, you now risk isolation and losing any opportunity to grow emotionally intimate. You rob yourself of any chance to learn about vulnerability and see how it's from there that love grows. Conversely, if you remove all boundaries and it's a freaking free-for-all. You are allowing and risking every type of bacteria, infection, invader, parasite to get in where the getting's good and good, taking everything they need with no regard for what is left for you. They don't care what's left behind. They don't care. They're taking, 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 right? Neither of those is good. I I'm here to say that there's a middle ground. There's a healthy boundary, a healthy amount of eyelashes to keep your eyeballs moist, not too wet and not too dry, and a healthy amount of pubic hair that will do the same. I also, you know, I took a moment and made a note of the apprehension my young friend felt regarding the arrival of pubic hair and puberty. And that while this is an exciting thing, right, the arrival of womanhood, that there's also the loss of childhood. And I have found that in my my own personal like journey, development, experience with creating and maintaining boundaries, and also when I talk to clients when I talk, when I'm a guest at groups, when I'm teaching workshops, when I'm speaking somewhere about this topic and and we're sharing about it, there is a sense of freedom and satisfaction and celebration and excitement of actually standing up for yourself and creating these boundaries and asking for what you need. And there is a loss. In order to say yes to something, it almost always requires saying no to something else. That's like what a boundary is. And we're so conditioned to say yes to everyone else, which often requires a no to ourselves. We're so conditioned that that is right, that is good, and we're comfortable with it because we've done it forever, that when we start to explore the opposite and we start saying yes to ourselves, which then requires a no to someone else, it hurts. We are losing something. And I am here to say that it is okay for you to feel that. I also want to encourage you to keep going, right? There is, again, there's a balance. It's not a fortress. It's not nothing. There's a balance and it's okay for it to be uncomfortable, Okay, there is that middle ground. There is a healthy boundary, a healthy amount of eyelashes, a healthy amount of pubic hair, a healthy amount of yeses and nos that will support the overall health of the environment of you and your body to be healthy and thrive and reduce harm. So now another connection, when I was first thinking about this, I figured this is where the episode would end. But then as I was working on this and like making my notes um, and preparing to record today, I found another connection and I just can't keep it to myself. So I'm going to go into it. I wasn't planning on making this. I didn't plan it. But the light turned red and I ran it. Anyway, that's from Waitress. Totally off topic. Okay. I'm going to state a couple of obvious things. Our eyelashes protect our eyeballs. Yes. Our eyeballs help us see, right? Our eyeballs help us see what's coming, what's dangerous, what's safe, 
what's not safe. They allow us to clearly assess the environment. Now, something I talked about in the final episode of my first podcast, Myth of Motherhood, and then again in episode 30 of this podcast, Alter Your Life, titled Where's Your Vagina Pointing? I discuss alignment and where your vagina is pointing because I believe that as women, connecting to our vaginas, our pelvic floor, this part of our body that we are conditioned to be disgusted by, ashamed of, embarrassed of, and keep secret and disconnect from, that if we connect to this part of our body, this is our direct link to our intuition, our individual intuition and our collective intuition, okay? Our vaginas and our intuition help us see what is dangerous and what is safe, what is ours and what is someone else's, what is meant for us, what is not meant for us. Our vagina helps us assess the situation, gives us feedback, and points us in the right direction. Our eyes and our vaginas can do this because they are supported by healthy boundaries. Boundaries that aren't completely impermeable, but they are judicious considerate, sensitive, dare I say, picky, right? These boundaries are our sensors. I think of like spidey senses, right? Like our intuition that give us feedback on what is our right decision. What is our right move? It is okay for you to be picky when it comes to your body and your life. They are are yours. And just like my conversation with my young friend, you hold the razor. You get to decide what stays and what goes. My wish for you is to have information so that you make informed decisions that support your health and ability to thrive. That you aren't victim to a trend or a buzzword, but instead understand the purpose of these boundaries before you go like over reinforcing or completely removing them. That you work as judiciously, considerately, sensitively, and pickily, I made up that conjugation of that word, as your eyelashes and your pubic hair do to reduce friction and harm in order to build intimacy. I want to thank you so much for being here today. I know how precious your time is, and I am honored that you choose to share some of yours with me. If you liked today's episode, I invite you to rate the show and leave a review. Let me know what resonated for you. Share this episode with a friend and obviously make sure that you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And if you're looking for more, as I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the episode, I'm writing more about the behind the scenes of everything over on my Substack, alteryourlife.substack.com. And most importantly, remember, as always, I've got your back, I've got your front, and I've got your undercarriage. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me and listening to the end of this episode. Look at you. You're someone who finishes what they start. I love that about you. And if you're picking up what I'm laying down, be sure to visit me over at alyssaalter.com for more resources on how you can alter your life, like downloading the five-minute meditation that I use to start my day with confidence and ease, all before getting out of bed. See you next week.